Hey Sony fans, this video will compare the Sony a7R 2 to the Sony a7R 3 This is not a video that's going to go through the menus. We're not going to go out and shoot. This video fills a gap on your research between these two cameras in that all I am going to focus on is what you can expect it to feel like, what it looks like up close, how the buttons feel and, and operate. This kind of fills a gap in the research that I was doing. I couldn't find any video that really just focused on the emotional side of, of the camera. Everything was uh, really technical. So um, if you value uh, the look and feel, what to expect moving from one camera to another, uh, this video is for you. If you like this video, please subscribe because, hey, subscribers is what really drives uh, YouTube content, and I know I would sure appreciate your subscription. Uh, my channel is uh, relatively random. You know, I uh, post some car stuff, some uh, cooking stuff, some camera stuff. Uh, so, you know, you never know what you're going to get, but uh, subscribing uh, for sure motivates me to keep uh, pumping out content. So, I would sure appreciate it. All right, let's get into it. I made a little list of things I'd like to cover with you, and first on the list is the grip. So, the grip on the old camera is narrower than the new camera. I thought that the grip on the old camera felt pretty good, right? It's, um, it's uh, you know, you don't know what you don't know, right? Until you grab the new one. The new one really fills your hand, and uh, my hand is, you know, probably average. If you have a huge hand, your fingers might hit depending on what lens you have, because there is less clearance due to the bigger grip. But it doesn't feel like, I mean, it fits my hand perfectly. Now, with the bigger grip, I would say a clutch is a must, because in order to hold this sucker for several hours and keep your finger, um, you know, available, right, and not participating in supporting the camera, uh, there's a lot. There's quite a bit of pressure on the back of my of my hand here on the clutch, and I can loosen that or or tighten it. So I would say the clutch is a must with the new grip because it's so big, uh, but it feels better. It feels more natural in the hand. And the other thing, uh, while we've got this, is your back button focus is literally right here. Uh, you can hit it, you know, with your thumb, and you can still trigger. It is such a unbelievably great design. On the old camera, you do not have that button right here. You've got your movie button over here, which is now moved, but that back button focus option, you, you, it's not right here. It's not convenient at all, and I think that was the main problem with me not really finding any value in back button focus because the button wasn't convenient. Well, now it is. So the weight is heavier. It, it just feels beefier. Uh, the lenses that we use, you know, these are both G Masters. They're so heavy. Uh, you know, I have to admit, the weight I'm not really excited about, uh, especially if you're shooting for hours. You know, my hand hurts on this one, <laughs> shooting a, you know, a full football game. Uh, I can't imagine how it's gonna feel with this, but uh, I'm just gonna have to suck it up because the other options are well worth the value. But I have to say it is uh, slightly heavier. So the feel of the rubber, the rubber feels uh, grippier. You know, it has a little bit more of a texture to it. And I don't think that's just because my camera is two years old and, you know, it starts to uh, get, you know, just a little harder, I guess, over time um, as it fills up with, you know, oils from your hand or whatever. Uh, this one, even though it's new, you can tell that it, they, they, they've changed the formula in some way. It feels a little bit grippier. And also when you flip it over, the battery grip now is rubber throughout, as opposed to the old one where the door is this hard plastic. So that's a change. The shutter button looks different and it functions, uh, it feels different. So you can see it's larger. And I like larger, especially with a glove on. Uh, but let me uh, show you something with the, the, the distance that you press it. So uh, halfway down to focus and then shoot. If you've ever handed your camera to somebody and said, hey, push it halfway until you get the green box, and they haven't been able to figure out you know, what you're talking about, well, they're never gonna figure it out on this one because it is so tiny. It's a tiny little, very sensitive. And um, it also, interestingly enough, as you point it around, you can set this in the menu, but it is auto-focusing. You know, you just hold it on something for a second and it'll start to auto-focus. You don't even have to push the button. Uh, so 
that's a neat feature because it kind of gets ahead of focusing even faster for you. One more thing about the shutter is the sound. On the old camera, it's very digital sounding. You know, it's your typical digital creation uh, simulating a shutter. On this one, it almost sounds like it really is mechanical. Listen to that. I love it. It's also extremely fast. Uh, the processor is just so much faster, you're immediately ready to shoot the next frame. Now part of that is the way I have this set up, but if you notice when you take a picture with this one, you get that black screen for a second. And I do have it on preview, uh, so you know, all fairness, it, it's not really that long, but just the, the black screen, this one doesn't do that as long. See, you get a black screen, but it pops the, the, the image back up it, it instantly. So anyway, I like that. I think that's a definite upgrade. The lens mount is different in that it's more precision made, I guess, is the best way to describe it. When you, uh, on the old camera, the lens has a slight amount of play in it and it's not leaking light. It's not defective in any way. It just has a little bit of play in it. When you take it off and put it back on, you get a kind of a baby click. Well, with the new one, it's like putting a fire hose on a fire hydrant. I mean, it's got this, uh, this like resistance. I mean, it is so tight. And when you, when you click it, I mean, it's a precision click. There is no play whatsoever. And I can switch lenses and I experience the same thing. So they've redesigned the lens mount in some way that is definitely an improvement. So the Hoodman eyepiece that I use, the reason why I'm mentioning it is because on the Hoodman website, it doesn't say that it fits this camera. It does. Uh, so food for thought. I, um, you know, obviously they'll update it at some point, but I wanted to mention that. I bought it anyway, and I was happy to see that it fits perfectly. The uh, flash guard is, uh, you know, flat or a uh, shoe thing that you put in here. Uh, it comes with the new camera. I buy extras because I lose them. Uh, if I'm, you know, shooting outside, I don't use the flash all that often. And when I do, I usually use the remote flash, but it occurred to me, you know, there's gotta be a bunch of uh, dust and stuff that just builds up in there. So I've started to put these on uh, all the time. You can see the difference. This is the factory, you know, Sony one, which actually is harder to get out. And this is the Amazon, you know, three for five bucks. Uh, that I'm gonna switch to for everything because it's just easier to get out. You know, it doesn't need to be as tight as the factory one. The um, selector wheel, we'll just keep moving around the camera here. Uh, the, incidentally, the diopter wheel is identical uh, between both cameras. The selector dial here, it, it functions the same. You know, you push this in to turn it. It has the same feel. It has different options on it. You lose scene and you pick up S and Q. Uh, you lose um, uh, this pano, whatever that is. I never use it. And, you, uh, and then you don't pick up, uh, oh, and then you pick up another uh, memory setting. So the new camera has uh, manual, and then it has memory one, two, and three. And then it's got a dedicated movie, s and auto, and then priority, or program, aperture priority, shutter priority. Uh, I, I'm, I'm a manual guy, so I just keep it on manual 99% of the time. If I'm shooting something that I just I don't want to think and I'm having a hard time getting uh, you know, it not to be blown out or whatever, I just throw it in auto. But for the most part, I keep it on manual, so I don't have a lot of value in these extra memory buttons, but I thought I'd point it out because it's different. The C2, C1, you know, these are exactly the same. Uh, the exposure compensation wheel is exactly the same. Um, the shutter and the aperture wheels are significantly different. You know, you might not think it just looking at it, but they're bigger and they're more of a positive click. So when I turn these, uh, you know, if you ever over, you know, overdid it and have to wheel it back or you had a hard time getting traction with a glove on, that will not happen with these. More of the wheel is exposed because it's bigger and uh, there's a positive notch in between the settings. It's really very nice. Um, you know, I like it a lot. Okay, the uh, movie button. 
The movie button, thank God, they moved from the edge here. I don't know how many times I've looked down and I've been recording movie, a movie and I didn't even realize it. Uh, the movie button is now uh, repositioned up under uh, or up next to the eyepiece and it's raised and you can easily hit it with a glove. It's just a way better design and I'm glad that it's way over there. While we're on movie, another neat feature is if you have it set to movie, you can program the shutter button to turn the movie on and off uh, or to start and stop you know, recording. Uh, I think that's a great feature. Um, I'm gonna throw these back into auto uh, just so when I turn them on, they don't try to focus. Um, so the, uh, the selector dial is, um, is next and it is so much better. So this whole thing is raised and on the old camera, it's not, it's just completely flat. And you know, I use my selector dial for ISO. I, I want to control my ISO you know, most of the time. And being able to rotate this dial uh, with the new design is so much easier than this smaller dial. Uh, I, I really, I had gotten used to it, but now with the new one, it's so much better. And just like the shutter and aperture wheels, the notches in between the selections are very obvious and positive. Uh, as far as functionality, it works exactly the same, you know, as kind of a toggle pad. The center button still works exactly the same. So, you know, that is, uh, uh, there's no change there. The, let's see, wow, well, I've not, uh, selection dial. So no more auto manual focus switch, you know, this little toggle thing right here which I honestly never have used ever, uh, it's gone. And in its place is a uh, joystick. Now this joystick uh, is kind of cool. I use the pad, it does basically everything the pad does except when you're trying to move your focal point around. Uh, the pad won't control the focal point unless you program it, but the joystick is defaulted to control the focal point. So let me show you what I, what I mean, if we can just you know, focus in on the floor over there. Well, I can move my center of focus. Actually, I need to change my, uh, hold on a second here. Oh, I'm in auto. <laughs> shows, uh, shows how often I am in auto. I don't know what's happening. There we go. So uh, you can double click it, and I know it's hard to see, uh, but that, um, yeah, see what I mean? That's why I, uh, there we go. There we go. So we've got the, um, we've, you can now see it in green. And I can move that wherever I want. Like I'm gonna move it way over here. And, and there we go. And I'm leaving it dark so you can see it easier. I'm gonna move it way over here. And here's why this is cool. Um, there it is right, <laughs> right there on the far right. Uh, here's why this is cool. If you are up on the eyepiece, you can easily access this toggle and move your focal point around. If you get it too far off, you just double click it and it goes right back to the center. I love that feature. Uh, what I used to do with this camera because it just wasn't convenient to move it around. You know, if I'm holding the camera, I can't bend my thumb all the way down there to, to set the pad uh, to move my focal point around. And I also have my wheel set for ISO, which is more important to me. So what I was doing, is probably what everybody else does is I would take it out of continuous focus, I would focus on something, and then I would move the camera to set my uh, composition, right? And it's just constantly focus, move, focus, move. And uh, I was shooting a tennis match with this the other day, and I was able to easily move that focal point up. So if you can imagine, I was across the court, I'm trying to shoot the player in this camera, uh, which I had shot tennis also with, uh, it's constantly trying to focus on the net, right? Because the net is in between me and the player. Well, with this one, uh, I could move that focal point up so easily that I could keep the focus on the player literally the whole time. And I'm still getting the net in there for composition. It, it looked great. The net was slightly blurred. Uh, and it was so easy compared to the old camera. So that is a definite plus uh, for having this toggle back here. The other thing uh, about the um, touch screen is that you can uh, move the focal point around uh, just by, there we go, let's get it to, just by um, hitting the screen. So of course I probably have it off right now. Yeah, I guess I have it off in the menu. Uh, touch screen. Hmm. 
Uh, let's see here. Well, I'm not gonna fool with it right this second, but um, you can touch the screen if you're shooting in landscape mode. I must have it turned off. And that will move your focal point around. But that's only valuable if you're looking through the screen versus the eyepiece. So there's, you know, it's, it, that's pretty neat. Um, one more thing about the screen and the eyepiece. So in the old camera, you have to uh, modify the sensor right here by sticking this little uh, piece of rubber, you know, non-skid or black electrical tape, whatever you want to use. If you want to see how to do it, I have a video on it. You have to stick it over a third of the right side of the sensor in order to cause it to not go off until you're right up on it. In fact, sometimes the hoodman would set it off. If I was shooting down low, my body mass would set it off. Sometimes if I pulled this up, it would set it off and I would lose the screen and it would go to the eyepiece and it was just the most annoying thing in the world. So uh, Sony, um, the fix of blocking this out fixed it sort of. Uh, but the new sensor is not that sensitive. I mean, you got to get way up on it to shut it off. So basically they've done exactly what I've done by blocking the sensor. It's the same distance. It's really brilliant. The other thing is if you have this out in any way, the eyepiece will not go off, uh, will, will, will not trigger the screen to go off at all. They assume that you're using this and you can get it as close as you want. And that is the best fix ever. I've lost shots because the screen goes out if I'm trying to shoot way down low. And with this one, it, it's impossible, it won't happen. So really happy about that change. Okay, no more manual, uh, dedicated back button focus. We talked about that a little bit. They've put this new button here. It comes default to back button focus, which is a pretty cool feature. Uh, something I think I'll actually use now that it's you know where my thumb would be when when I'm you know strapped in. Uh, there's uh, uh, the ability to set eye focus on these on the new camera is super cool. So you can assign eye focus wherever you want. The old camera has eye focus. I think the processor and the focusing speed wasn't good enough to actually make it work. This one it is. I set uh, eye focus to my uh, focus hold buttons on the. On, on here and um, on the lens. If you don't have that, you can set it to something else. Uh, I would probably, if I didn't have that, I'd set it over here to the C3 button because the way it works is uh, if you have it on face priority and you're shooting and there's people, it'll automatically try to grab their faces. As soon as you hit this button and hold it, it will try to grab their eye and then when you let it go, it'll stop. So in fact, I think I am gonna switch that to eye focus in case I have a lens on there that doesn't have a focus hold button. So, um, so anyway, that's a really neat feature uh, and uh, something that I will actually use now because it's functional on the camera versus uh, before where you just, you really didn't have a button. If you notice, there's nothing over here except the memory. So now with this extra button here, I'm, I'm, I'm like super excited because I just realized that as I'm doing the video. So as soon as I finish the video, that will become eye focus also. So uh, dedicated, uh, let's see, ability to see eye focus. The joystick, we talked about that. We talked about the touch screen, uh, the grip door. So the grip door is, uh, is different. And I hate the old grip door, uh, battery door. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I would look down and this would be flapping against my side. And I know exactly what happens. I'm rubbing against this and rubbing and rubbing and it finally opens. It's just stupid, it's stupid design. Um, this one is completely redesigned. So not only is it much bigger, but you have to lift up this, turn it, and then you pull the entire thing out. Uh, this one, you lift it up, turn it, and you pop the battery out. And look at the difference in the size of the batteries. I burn through these, I have to carry around at least two extra batteries. So I'm burning four batteries on a typical shoot, at least. This one, I can't kill these in a, in, a, in a typical shoot. Unless I'm like racing through menus and constantly reviewing, um, maybe, but I can't kill these. Uh, and it's just a very solid connection uh, and this is not gonna get caught and open up. So much improved uh, battery grip door. So uh, the cable doors over on the side here, they're still these cheesy little doors. Um, but they changed the way they swivel. So let me show you what I mean. On the old camera and the other A7s, this thing, 
you open this up and and there's this piece of plastic right here and frankly uh, you have to bend the plastic around in order to put the cables in and you only get so many bends you know eventually the thing is going to break well with the new door they have like a pole and the pole has a fitting on the back that just spins so you're you're literally you're not putting pressure on anything to get the door out of the way it just lifts up and spins so i like that much better and i i get why these doors are so flimsy because they want them to be as non-obtrusive as possible and they are you know if you don't use this stuff and you i, I never use this stuff ever uh, so I just keep them closed and I never, they never pop open. I never hit them on anything. Uh, so for me, they're great. If you open these constantly, they're cheesy. Uh, but the new swivel design is way, way better. So that's an improvement. Okay, on the other side, the uh, card door is different also. So uh, of course it has two cards in it now which I can't say enough about the other card, but let me get this so you can probably see it. So, so right here on the old camera is the card door, and it's, it's nice. It's a positive click. Uh, you have to open it um, intentionally. It's got one card in it. This is different. It pops open like that, and um, when you close it, it is this weird, it almost feels like a magnet. It isn't a magnet, but there is literally no sound and hardly any resistance. And if you look closely, you're probably not gonna be able to see it, but there's this tiny little metal latch. It is so tiny, and that is what opens and closes this door. And I'm a little concerned about that. We'll see. I mean, you open and close this door every time you shoot, you know, for, for me, because I take the cards out and I load them onto something. But, uh, you know, I hope that that holds up because on this side, it looks like it's just plastic, but maybe it's metal. No, I think that's just plastic. Uh, anyway, so the door is totally different. Uh, and then let's just talk about the cards for a minute. So you get a HD or you get a uh, SD2 slot. This is a rather pricey card. Uh, I bought the Sony brand because the price between SanDisk and Sony was pretty similar. And I figured, you know, why not just buy the brand? Um, Oh my God, it's so much faster. It is so great. I love this card. The uh, speed when it loads to your iPad or to your um, computer, whatever, it is so much faster. And obviously when you take, I mean, this, for, this does 10 frames per second. When you do that, obviously the card plays a role in the ability for the camera to you know, buffer out to the card faster. The other card slot is just your regular card slot, the same as in this one. I put a uh, 64 gig Extreme Pro in there and you have to decide where you're gonna store stuff. So uh, I'll just share what I do, but you can do whatever you want. Uh, what I do is I put all my movies on the slower card. So if I, if I start recording movie, it's gonna automatically put it on the slower card. And the main reason why I do that is because it's annoying to sort through the movies to find the photos when I try to load the card. Um, it, and, and I don't necessarily want all my movies. If I, if I shoot a movie, it can probably stay in there for a little while until I'm ready to deal with it. So having them all on this card is just beneficial for me. So that's what I did. On this card, I do my RAWs and JPEGs together. And most of the time I do JPEG only. Depends on what I'm doing. When I use RAW, uh, it's because I'm shooting in less than ideal lighting. It's either too dark or it's too bright, and I wanna get as much of the image as I can because I know I can fix it. I'm more likely to be able to fix it in RAW than JPEG, uh, so I'll show you at the end, You know, the, one of the last things I have on my list is the uh, menu, but you can set up a menu where you can easily toggle between JPEG only and JPEG RAW. The reason why also I don't stay in JPEG RAW is because the buffering time just takes longer. When you, uh, when you, when you hit like you know, 10 frames, uh, it will take longer to transfer those and you're kind of held up. And if I'm not shooting something that I particularly care about, uh, I will um, just leave it in JPEG because then it's just super fast. Okay, 
Grip doors, cable doors, card door, cards and speed. Oh, so next up is my is the my menu option, and this is so cool. So uh, when you when you go into uh, the menu option, and I'm going to try to move this here a little bit uh, so that you can see it. Um, right here, there's this new star right there, and that new star is the new um, menu screen, and you can put whatever you want in it, anything you want. So in this camera. You know, I'd stand there trying to hunt for the for the menu that I wanted because I you know if I don't use it all that often I can't figure out where it is or if it's part of the top you know five that I use frequently it's just a pain this one you can put I use my I'm a obsessive format I format my cards every time I put them in the camera so I have format number one I'm constantly sending them to my smartphone uh, to get them on social media or whatever so that's option two file format is option three and that's what I was telling you about I can easily jump in a second to JPEG plus RAW, or I can come back and do only JPEG in a second uh, with this menu. I don't have to hunt for it at all. Finder monitor uh, turns the monitor on and off. I'm not gonna do it because then I have to look in there to get it back, but um, finder monitor, if I'm walking around at night doing some street photography, I draw attention to myself if this screen stays on and I would prefer not to do that. So I shut the screen off completely if I'm doing that. and and that's why that's there. Uh, cleaning mode, uh, that's always, you know, I use that. Uh, that's really my first option uh, if I don't have a bulb on me to, to blow the sensor off. And then control with smartphone. I put that on there because if I'm doing a uh, long exposure or something, it's very quick to control it with the smartphone so you don't have to touch the shutter uh, button and risk screwing up, you know, risk shaking the camera. So anyway, that's the only menu I wanted to show you because it's new and it is so cool. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's really, uh, you know, just part of the whole package of why you would want to upgrade. So the last thing I want to go over is, uh, is just the, the accessories that I put on my cameras. And uh, I've got a couple questions on my older uh, videos on, you know, what is that and where did you get it? Uh, so I figured, you know, why not? So this is the clutch uh, from Peak Design. I've, I've gone through a couple different styles of these things. I like this one the best as long as it's connected to the uh, quick release for the tripod. If it's connected over here to the battery grip, it's just not enough room because, you know, I angle my hand to the point where my hand hangs over that. So connecting it to, the, to here is just, it's fantastic. And the thing I love about this clutch compared to other ones is it's so easy to torque down to take the pressure off of your fingers. You know, I can almost balance the camera in there with no pressure on my fingers. And if I want to release it, you just pop this and it, you're instantly out of it. Uh, so this, I think, is one of the best design clutches that I've ever used. I put a screensaver on every one of my cameras. This is just a glass screensaver. Uh, I got it from Amazon. You get two for 10 bucks or something. It's, it's a great deal and it protects the screen. The touch screen works right through it, no problem. Um, the Hoodman, I put that on every single one of my cameras. You know, I switch between cameras pretty frequently, so having them set up exactly the same, you know, as much as possible, because this one has new buttons, but having it set up uh, the, the closest as possible makes it so I don't have to think when I shift between cameras. And sometimes I'll have three cameras on set. You know, I'll do a telephoto, I'll do something closer, and then I'll do a prime in my A7 II. And, uh, having that, uh, having them all the same is just uh, really convenient. So every one of them has the same eyepiece. Uh, the uh, grip or the the thing on the bottom here. This is a three-legged thing uh, tripod quick release. And three-legged thing changed their design a little bit. I think I'm gonna switch. I'm gonna buy another one for this one. They put these two screws in here, and the reason why they did that is so it would catch on the on the uh, quick release, and you have to intentionally lift it off. So if you didn't tighten it enough, it won't slide off anymore. This one, it will slide off. I have to admit that never happened to me, um, partly because of these, the way I strap it in there, you know, this kind of this kind of snugs up to it and helps prevent it from sliding at least in one direction. But this is a good idea. So uh, I'm gonna upgrade to and change out this one to, to be the same. And then lastly, the straps. So these are uh, Peak Design straps. They're uh, they, they just had a, a new strap come out. This is the new one. It only comes in black and this color, they, I think they call it ash. 
but it's like a, a high quality seat belt material. The old one had, um, had like a, a, you could see it was paneled. It was a three panel design. This is just a woven random design. It's, it's, uh, it's double sided, meaning that it's, it looks like it was originally a tube and they kind of ironed the tube down and it has a pad in it. And then they've redesigned the grip on the back or on the top. I never actually use this because I like to let my camera slide around, but rather than have these long rubber uh, grip tape, so to speak, now it's uh, much more tackier. They've got their logo in there and it's just a better design. Uh, I have to admit, I, I never use this because I, I'm constantly swinging my camera and I don't want it gripping to my shoulder, but if you do, this is a way better design. And then of course I have them embroidered, uh, you know, the branding. Um, a buddy of mine uh, said, you know, I'm, I'm shooting and he's uh, standing behind me and he goes, you know, you should really put your logo on the back of your strap. And I thought that was a brilliant idea and I, I've done it to all my straps and I've even gotten a little business because of it. Uh, but anyway, this is the Peak Design. I, I leave them in the, the only gripe that I have about this is it would be nice if it was longer. Uh, I have them maxed out in the longest length and I would like to be able to uh, make it, you know, slightly shorter or slightly longer, depending on what I'm doing. Uh, but thank God it's as long as it is because it's, if you were any taller than me, these might not be long enough for you. So. Peak Design, if you're watching, uh, you know, a little bit longer would be nice. Anyway, I hope you uh, valued this video. Uh, this is, you know, just a kind of informal look at the different uh, features, what to expect, mostly how the camera is going to feel. And uh, if I accomplish that, then I accomplish my goal. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe and uh, stay tuned for new, new cool videos. <laughs> Thanks again. See ya.